one of the nutrients, plant nutrients, that I love talking about the most is sulfur simply because we never used to have to fertilize for it at all, and now we do. And Darren, I think we should go back to where we didn't have to fertilize for it. Well, you know, you can say, oh, well, there's a lot of things that have changed as my yields have come up. Yes, that's true, but there's also things that have changed because our environment has gotten a lot cleaner. Yep, and what it basically amounts to is we have cleaner air today, so we don't have as much acid rain as we used to. We used to have sulfur falling from the sky, so we got free fertilizer as farmers. And I thought that was great. Now, <laughs> certainly people didn't live as long, but I got free fertilizer, you know, Derek. I, I've got a story about that too, Brian, because I've got a foreign exchange student from down by Hong Kong that's living with us this year. And I said, you know, it'd be nice to go visit your home someday. And she said, oh, that'd be great, but I don't know if you would like it. And I said, well, why not? And she said, well, because the air is, well, it's, it's kind of dark and it's kind of heavy. And I said, you mean there's a lot of pollution? She goes, well, yeah, there is a lot. And I said, do you notice a difference here? And she's like, are you kidding? In South Dakota, this is great. The air is fantastic. But you know, in China, they've got those situations that we had a hundred years ago in our country where there were a lot of factories. People were happy to have the job. We were doing a lot of heavy manufacturing and different industries that were putting a lot of sulfur out into the air. And now we've cleaned a lot of that up over the years. And you know, China will probably get there in, you know, who okay. knows, 50 or 100 years right. from now. So but right now, the Chinese farmers are getting free sulfur. Okay, so let's not get too far down this other path. The point is, if you're raising crops in the United States, the odds are you're going to need some sulfur today, especially when you're raising grass crops like corn and wheat. Corn, for example, is going to take a tremendous amount of sulfur, not just for the grain, but for the stover also. You have to have some sulfur out there. And the other thing you need to know about this sulfur is sulfur can leave leach just like nitrogen. So you wouldn't ever think of, well, I had corn a couple years ago. I'm not going to put any nitrogen out because I put some on then and whatever I had left over, it'll, it'll be fine for this year. No way. You know that you have to use nitrogen. It's the same kind of deal with sulfur. Okay, Certainly there will be a little bit in the ground, but is there enough to raise a 200, 250, 300 bushel corn crop? I doubt it in most cases. So you've got to figure out some way to get some sulfur out there. How should you do it? Well, I like that you mentioned nitrogen and sulfur in the same sentence because that's how I think of them. They both are leachable and they should both be applied at the same time. Typically that's in the spring. I don't like to put nitrogen and sulfur on in the fall. I'd prefer to wait until the spring for those. What we're seeing a lot of farmers do that are used to using dry fertilizer is put on some ammonium sulfate as part of their nitrogen source but they can also get that sulfur really cheap when you buy it in the form of ammonium sulfate. Plus that ammonium sulfate is very stable out in your soil. That's a great way to put sulfur on your fields. For the liquid guys, ammonium thiosulfate has historically been the most popular product. This last year there were a lot of guys using the new product called Access because you didn't have to use such a high rate to get the same type of activity out in your field. There are a lot of other methods to getting sulfur out there as well. So on our farm we spread some manure. With manure a lot of times we have fairly high amounts of sulfur. We also spread lime on our farm sometimes and guess what? There's a fair amount of sulfur sometimes in lime. Make sure that you're testing both your manure and your lime so you know what you're actually putting out there. Now when you we, talk about lime, what kind of lime are you talking about that you're getting sulfur in? Because typically you think of that as calcium carbonate. Yeah, but the whole thing is we're typically getting lime from water treatment plants. And you have to be careful when you're getting lime from water treatment plants because it could have heavy metals, so try to avoid that. But the water treatment plants around here uh, they don't seem to have that. We don't get heavy metals, but what we do get is a bunch of other stuff besides just calcium carbonate. There's sulfur and a number of other nutrients. Well, many of the other nutrients may be relatively low. If I'm putting six tons of lime out there per acre, I get several pounds <laughs> of sulfur. Well, that's all I'm saying. You just have well, to look true. at all these things. So if you're not looking at the lime, you're not looking at manure, you're not looking at some of the other sources you're getting from, or for that matter, even your organic matter, you'll say, well, my corn's going to need 30 pounds. I'm just going to throw 30 pounds out there you probably don't need to get that carried away. The other thing would be calcium sulfate or gypsum. There's a lot of guys using some gypsum in certain areas yep. and under different situations. It's a great way to get some sulfur and some calcium out there at the same time. So we've talked about liquid methods, dry methods. There are a bunch of different ways you can do this thing. Just always keep in mind with sulfur, it is leachable. It's going to move down through the profile relatively quickly. So you don't have to put it six inches deep or anything like that for the roots to get it. It will move down into the root zone. Hey, that's a good point though, Brian. When you look at your 
soil tests and you see very high levels of sulfur, what does that tell you? Usually that means you've got a drainage issue. If sulfur is not leaching away, it's staying there because water is not moving through your soil profile. So I can almost always pinpoint a drainage issue when I'll find spots in certain fields. I don't even have to look at the field. The guy will show me a soil test and I can say, hey, I bet you got a drainage issue right there. Yeah, how'd you know that? Well, because your sulfur level, which normally is 10 or 20 parts per million, it's 2,000. Unbelievably excessive and it's only because you have that drainage issue. The other thing, Brian, that we haven't talked about is elemental sulfur. And yeah. when you think about that, if you want to quickly lower your soil pH, elemental sulfur is one way to do that. It's not a very long lasting process, but there are a number of guys that are banding some sulfur on right behind their planter in the row, just trying to influence that root zone for a short period of time so they can get a good crop established in a high pH environment. Now that's not to say that all forms of sulfur are going to lower your pH and lower it quickly. Elemental sulfur will, something like gypsum that's calcium sulfate will not. So it all depends on what type of sulfur you're looking at. Just talk to your agronomist, they can help you a little more with that. Again, sulfur is extremely important in plants, especially the grass crops, and we don't get it for free anymore through the air, so you're probably gonna need to fertilize on your farm. One other thing we don't get for free is weed control, but we'll show you what does work on our Weed of the Week coming up next.